YouTube friends, what is going on? And David Lee back, brand new video. This is part three of our cinematography breakdown. Uh, we're going into more close-ups, um, the product shot, and also of our Talon drinking uh, the protein. Pretty minimal setup here. You know, as far as lights go, we're using the same the same lights as we were in uh, part two. The Quasars with the 120D and the Fresnel. Uh, we're punching through um, some diffusion with the 120D this time. And then, um, you know, just kind of finessing things with uh, a little nan light tube add something to, to the background, a little bit of a leading line as well. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into Shot Designer and I'll show you guys what we were working with. Alrighty, we are back. You know the drill. Uh, we're in the kitchen for for our part three. Um, we have a couple of different things going on, right? We had our product shot here, which is on the table, um, a close up of um, a, a shaker bottle with the protein being, being poured in. That one, there wasn't much to it, it was uh, just kind of back lighting the whole thing and then letting the ambient from the windows come in. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to want to see that, but I'm not going to go over it. It's just this product shot, nothing really fancy with that. Uh, but we move into the last shots of, of uh, our talent drinking the protein and then having that moment after she's finished drinking the protein, right? So that one is a bit more interesting. Uh, we'll start with uh, the lighting. Uh, let me add in, I keep forgetting to add my sun in. So let's go ahead and just do that right now. Uh, the sun at this point, I believe we were filming around 12, mm, 12.30 p.m., right? So the sun's probably over here, uh, here or somewhere, right? So you're just getting the light kind of skipping off of any, um, uh, any toweling from the floor, from the tree, is kind of you know, just adding some ambience back into um, the windows. So you have one window here, another window here, um, a double door, a clear door frames, and then a window here, right? Um, so what I did was we have our talent here. This is the sink area. Uh, we have the same quasars from our last setup um, with half CTS. I, I had it actually a little bit more here, right? So only maybe half of the quasars were, were punching in. Um, I didn't want the full thing um, coming at her. I just wanted uh, just a little bit, right? To kind of bring up the ambient um, exposure levels. Uh, the 120D with, again, half CTS was going through um, diffusion. Uh, and actually uh, on location, I, I changed this, right? So I actually had, um, had this guy going in like here, right? And then camera was, was camera was over here, right? So again, this is 120D, half CTS going through um, a, a circular diffusion, right? So we use that same 501 reflector, but we just took off the reflective material and just let it as the diffusion. And what that does is, again, it just kind of helps soften up the 120D with the Fresnel, um, as the Fresnel can be flooded or can be spotted. Um, I, I think I set it to somewhere in between, and then uh, it doesn't cover the whole circular diffusion, but you know, just enough to uh, key her, her face, and then the quasars are um, are bringing up the ambience around her, uh, her body, her chest, her um, her her shirt, right? Camera here, this is um, 50 millimeter SLR Magic APO lens. Uh, again, still using glimmer glass, nothing fancy there. Um, shooting opposite of our of our key side, right? Shooting on the dark side. Uh, I brought in neg fill, uh, camera camera left again, just to help create more contrast, right? So we have. Um, the we have our 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 ambient exposure, our overall exposure coming into this journal area here. We have our talent exposure, right? Our key light exposure here, and then so to create contrast, you bring Negfil here to bring um, uh, kind of just play around with the the contrast level, so that way there is um, there isn't just everything isn't over bright. It's not too high key, but everything isn't too dark or underexposed, right? You kind of have that balance between the two. Uh, and then I had an idea of putting, um, again, like without the nanline here, it was, you know, it, it was lit, um, but it's kind of uninteresting. So uh, one thing I like to do, and I gotta learn this from other people, is, you know, what can you put in um, in the mid ground or the background as a practical to add a leading line, to add some character, to add um, more dimensionality to the shot, right? So we had our nanlite tube, uh, so it's like a cyan color, right? Like a greenish tonality. Um, and I didn't really have any grip equipment for this. Otherwise, you know, there would be like um, a light stand in the shot or or you have to use like gaff, gaffer's tape. Um, so what worked was there was actually a, um, the, the vent to the, above the stove over here. And I just placed the tube on top of the stove and, and just balanced it. Um, it only took me a couple of seconds to balance. It wasn't too hard. So yeah, we had the net light here. Again, probably dialed down to maybe like 
mm, 10%, something like that, 10, 15%. Not a lot, uh, just enough to, to, to show the light, to show it in the shot, right? Uh, but again, we were shooting wide open at a T2.1, so you can't even tell that's a light there. You, you think that's just um, a practical in the background, right? Um, and yeah, I really like the way the, the shots came out. You can see her, you can see the bottle clearly, you can see the protein uh, liquid clearly, you can see her clearly. You have a nice, beautiful eye light there, right? Um, and then we also did use haze, a good amount of haze. Um, the hazer I have is really meant for like small rooms, so we had to continuously just pump haze and pump haze and pump haze and pump haze because you know the haze is going all all over here and it's going back into um, the doorway that leads to the front of the house, you know, so uh, not the best, not the most efficient way, but it's something that we had on hand. So the, um, that is what we use. All right, and again, uh, these aren't really expensive lights, you know, the the Quasar tubes, the T8s, they, they run for $45 a pop for the two foot versions, um, a 120D. This is the, the version one, not the not the Mark II, the Mark I. Um, you can, pretty, pretty affordable, like five, 500 bucks or 400 bucks if you shop around. Um, the Nan lights, again, the the, the two the two foot um, pairs are 549. Uh, neg fill, you can put anything up really. Um, and then, and yeah, you know, so there's really isn't a lot um, light here, but with what we had, we were able to manicure and, and finesse a very, um, you know, beautiful shot, beautiful scene. There you guys go, part three done. Benito. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little three-part series. I uh, hope to do some more uh, throughout the year, uh, just depending on you know if anything is kind of worthwhile, right? You know, I'm, I don't think anyone really wants to show or see things that are just kind of plain, right? If you can replicate it uh, without any light, it's like, eh, you know, like what's the point of actually doing that? Um, but if you do have situations, locations, tight locations, maybe you are filming in exterior. Um, spots where you don't have lights, you just have like neg fill or reflector, right? What can you do to create something that um, looks a little bit more filmic, more cinematic? If you guys like the video, leave a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it as always. Leave a comment down below. Let me know any thoughts, um, any concerns you guys have um, with lighting, especially with the close-ups too. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as always, just so you know if I have new content coming out. And remember friends, every day you have an opportunity to create your experience and to write and tell your own story. My name is David Lee, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.